So one of the most important things when painting a dune crawler is dividing it up into parts. So the leg plates that go on the legs, the feet will have to mask, the hatch, because it's red and tan on one side, there'd be no way you could paint it if it were on the, uh, the little hole hill without masking and a ton of work. The, the rocket launcher, everything's magnetized by the way. The, um, the guns, um, I got more parts over here. The gunner, which is magnetized in. Um, light bulbs magnetized. These guys added pins in the middle for magnetizing it. Um, the little arms, these are magnetized as well. Um, even the, the tiny little um, extra little gear parts that you could put on for war gear uh, are magnetized. And it's important because we do a lot of airbrushing to get those nice clean fades. Um, you can see here I've already started the tan parts and I've got a nice clean fade. This whole part is that uh, Admech tan with like a little bit of battle damage. It's kind of the dichotomy of the parts is that the red is nice and clean and then the tan parts are damaged. A little bit of scratch and things like that. You can see that kind of on the on the pictures here. The red's always really clean and then the tan's got little chips and stuff in the paint. This is usually down at the bottom of the vehicle. Um, now I'm going to illustrate how I put on the white because I want to make sure that as you're following along you have a good representation of like where we've sprayed the white and why. You can notice that like the little top parts there's little pieces that are picked out with the white. Left a dark edge here on the uh, the front just to kind of break up those panel lines and add a little bit more interest. It's not realistic, but it looks good in the end and it's eye-catching. Um, so, And then making sure that your whites are saturated because you don't want to spray your red over a gray tone. You want a super saturated white. So you need to take the time to build that up. It's not a lot of time, but it is a little bit of extra time. So for our white, I am using the Dr. Phil's Bombay White. It's an India ink flows nicely, doesn't clog a lot. Doesn't mean it's not susceptible to clogging, it just means it's not gonna clog as much. <clears throat> so I got my part here, this is one of the end cap for the uh, missile launcher. I'm gonna try and keep in frame, but the skull is the top of our object, so I'm gonna highlight from there. Again, I have some parts that I've highlighted from below and some parts that I've highlighted from the bottom. And I'm stopping here and there, letting the air dry the ink. I'm not building it up, or not over-building it up or over-saturating, because I don't want it to run, right? I want it to coat. I want that real nice, bright, bright white. And now there's a little bit of a seam in here, and I want to make sure I shoot that too, because it's probably going to be visible, but it doesn't have to be as bright. All right, so now we got our nice fade. You can see on the light that it's <clears throat> pretty bright. And then we also have smaller parts like this. These have all been primed black, and they've been blacked out even more with an airbrush primer black to make sure that I got my, my dark contrast on there. Same thing, I want to go from the top with this guy. And so that's, you know, a few sprays. I want to illustrate the difference between these whites. You see how washed out this side is after only a few sprays? Like, it's, it's a significantly darker, and you're not going to get your bright, vibrant reds if you don't get that white locked in. You know? Maybe you can hear the activation of the, of the airbrush. I know it's kind of hard to see. It's like spray, 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 air, spray, spray, just air, spray, spray. And the, when I say spray, spray, it's just a little pull of the trigger, right? All right, and so now our, our brightness is up to par with the brightness there. And then we got our nice gradient. <clears throat> on the piece. Even these little parts over here 
the little center. Uh, anywhere we're going to have red, we're going to want to try and airbrush our red because if we don't, it'll look inconsistent to the red somewhere else. And if you've got a little piece, it'll be kind of an eyesore. And I'm going to hit the edge here because this is a high point. So I'll get that nice and white. Small, small piece. Oh, one more we can do. Here we got the this splash. So this plate here is red. And then the rest of this is going to be a gunmetal with some plasma-ish effects. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this mount plate. And I've got these, again, all divided up on different stands. Some of them are on wires because there's no way to really tack them down and get, quote, all the way around. You just have to make that call what's easiest for you. And you see, I'm not having any trouble with this tack in the object and, you know, getting air pressure on it. It's not falling off uh, because I warmed up my sticky tack, pull, 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 like, you know, it gets warm in your hands and then it'll stick and you get these little parts kind of stuck in the middle there so you can still get to the edges. I'm not worried about the, the getting the airbrush on the edges because that's going to be a, a metallic color. Even this guy, the, uh, the canopy here is stuck underneath with a, a piece of sticky tack on a holder. That way I don't have to touch the model when I'm painting it. So some of those tan objects that you're going to have on the on the vehicles just I like the stripes that we did on the coats of the infantry. I'm going to use the Terran Khaki and Airbrush Center. It's about a 50-50 mix. <clears throat> I've already got that mixed up in my airbrush. And so like this little drilling claw is that tan color. So I'm going to do some light coating because it's a lighter color. It's going to take a while to actually get opaque on the figure. Doing short bursts of color, real light. Again, if we're doing this by hand, it take two to three brush coats. It take forever, so might as well not rush the airbrush and let this coat up get nice and opaque without running everywhere, getting super wet. little attachment point that's going to be that's tan as well i'm looking at the picture for reference here use reference save you time and you don't have to think about about it and you don't have to make those hard decisions I already made for you especially for painting box colors So you can see a couple minutes, I think, I've been filming for two minutes. Two minutes is not a lot of time to take to get a nice, okay, smooth coat on your object. You can kind of see the color better in the zoom out. Uh, but anything that needs that, like the inside of this little, uh, the rocket bay here. We're going to go ahead and airbrush that as well because we can close this up and then paint the red on the outside and it'll be pretty natural. And I'm going to coat all these parts and we'll move on to the next step. So next color we're using is the FW ink, the Burt Umber. That's our shadow color for our tan parts. <clears throat> so any part that's going to be down, I think the this little guy's the fork runs up and down, set it sideways, so we're going to aim at what we want the bottom to be. Real light, you don't want a whole lot of this color. You don't want it, you want it to look like a shadow and not uh, overwhelm the object. 
And then this little arm here, this guy. We're gonna just from the bottom, real light hit to this shadow color. We'll put this on before we do any of our weathering. Now we are going to use a sepia wash with this color as well to hit the shadows, rivets, things like that. Um, but this is kind of your your overall, so you don't have to wash the whole object. You can just knock in your shadow. Real quick. That place can be pretty dark. It's kind of like a reverse zenithal, like from the from the bottom on this one. Just has to richen it up. And then this one, this guy. So the whole undercarriage is gonna be that tan, but we're gonna paint the little claw feet red first because it's the small area, and the small area is a lot easier to mask than going back and just wrapping this entire object. We can just put a little tack on the ends of the feet and then paint the whole thing. All right, so after you get your object ready and we'll put a little bit of battle damage on here with um, torn sponge and dip it in your black kind of wipe it off and then you can you know hit the hit the edges you can do this with a paintbrush too if you like i just like the randomness that the sponge does um we're going to put on a a matte varnish you want that matte varnish on there so that your um, uh, your shade won't pool and then we're going to use our shade to to add definitions to the the rivets things like that so I go in here and hit some rivets you don't want to go to like too heavy with this let me pull my light down there you can see a little bit better there we go we can do like around the edge here in the cracks and then around this little metal piece here. Around here. And so this would tide if we, because we airbrushed it so much, it would tide if we didn't put that matte varnish on. So I've got a little bit of the, uh, the Army Painter anti-shine on there. All right, so once you get your matte varnish on and everything's dry, it's time to edge highlight these guys. So a little bit of black wash on the handle there and then sepia around just to deepen the shadows. We're going to use the same color that we airbrushed with and mix it up about 50-50 with some white. Go out the edge here and then edge highlights. So just to pop everything out. And then when you get to battle damaged areas, kind of stop your edge highlight. And you can go under them as well. Just to give that little extra paint chip look. Whoop, too big. And you can always wipe off with your finger if you get too much on there. Uh, <clears throat> as a process for the tan, those will be done. Um, when you get those edge highlights on. So. so it's magic time. We're gonna take our contrast Blood Angels Red through the airbrush and put it over all of our white highlighted objects. And this is just an overall spray. We're trying to tint the area with our pre-shade, with our overall coat. Don't get too heavy with it, let it do its thing. Then no reason to rush with the airbrush. And all those shadows are in there for us already. Places you really want to hit are the, the areas that are really white. Don't worry about the black so much because that'll already be in that dark red tone. You can see we're getting a really nice fade and a nice rich red. Make sure you hit those cracks and crevices where you got any sort of white peeking through.
We're going to go through and hit all of our objects with that. So next up for the red is the yellow ink overcoat. This just pushes the richness of the red. We got our piece here. You can see we got our nice fade from that really dark kind of umber tone all the way to the red, just with the contrast paint. And we're going to put some of our yellow on. Again, this is just to richen up the red just a little bit, push it in that orange tone. You do that with all the parts. Get a coat of matte varnish on all your red parts before you paint anything else. Just going to use the liquid gold on the, um, which one is this? this is rich gold on the uh, trim. This is the only part that really get this besides the rider, and maybe we'll put it on a few of the um, uh, cog skull marks on the um, on the actual walker. So this is where you want your gold to be on your objects. We're going to do a wash in the crack. And once that dries, while that dries, when I was doing the yellow, I hit these um, headlights with the um, the yellow ink because they had a little white zenith on them. You want to use your uh, Indian yellow, I Indian, I, I Indian yellow, and that'll give you a nice. The contrast worked really good for these yellow bulbs. And again, if you get too heavy, and you can use the, the brush to kind of soak it up. But you want it to pool on the corners. So after your gold's dry, we're going to drop black wash in the uh, crevices there. So you can see what that does. Gives you that nice hard separation line for the armor panel. I'm going to again use a liner, go really heavy, and just drop it right in these little cracks. So it's been a day and our feet are dry. I'm just going to use sticky tack to mask off where the, the red is and then we can trim up with a brush with our tan all the way up to the edge. But I'll do my airbrush and layers of the tan and the ink, um, the burnt umber ink <clears throat> for this guy. Um, for the top area, we went in, we did our edge highlight. <clears throat> where we did a, a black wash in the cracks and anywhere that there, there's like a hard seam where things meet up. For the bottom, um, just gonna go with a silver, probably mask off the sides with a sticky tack. I'll give you an example of, of what we do. Might decide to go tan, but there's a heavy mix of like silver and tan in here. Um, so it's either way. <clears throat> So once you get all your airbrushing done, that includes the ink, remember, don't forget, before you part put the steel colors on or any of the washes, matte varnish it will keep you from pooling and hating everything that happens after that. So the next thing we want to do on this guy, and it's pretty much the final step again, except for the underside, I'm just going to take some of this uh, tan color, color your... Uh, you're tearing same thing we did the stripes on the infantry with I'm gonna turn him upside down and the stripe runs underneath this so I'm going to just start a line go real light you don't want to go super heavy with pigment Doing this on camera is hard. So I want to get a little bit thinner paint since it's kind of, you can tell it's coming off the brush a little scratchy. And I can adjust. Doing this under the camera is even more challenging than just pulling a line. There we go. Got a fairly straight line there. Now this can be pushed a little bit by going in and cleaned up in subsequent layers. And I'm going to kind of judge where that ends there. Pull it. Alright, so we got our first sort of guideline. Might need to widen it just a little bit. Maybe not though. We can always use um, edge highlights to kind of trim it in. 
I'm gonna pull another one right here. Cool. Now he's faster. He's got a stripe. Oh, he's already red, so. Cool. And all that's left is to fill that in and highlight it. So that's what it should look like after your first coat. This is okay. Don't try to force paint to cover. Let it dry. If you go back and put another coat now, all you're going to do is reactivate stuff and strip it all the way back down to the red. Let it dry. We're going to go do something else for a minute. I'm going to go finish up the gold on the underside of these guys. And this can dry. So just flipping and sticking the uh, little leg plates there, painting the tabs on the top and bottom and the inside ring. That's the visible area. Everything else is going to be connected. Won't be able to see. So that's fine. You'd have to scrape the plastic. Anyway, next step is to identify all the pieces that are metal on this chassis. This is a long step. Uh, take your um, silver. You can use silver, you can use chrome, you can use steel. It's fine. They're pretty much all in the same range. Plus, we're putting a black wash on them anyway. <laughs> um, but go to your reference. So I use this picture because it at least gives me a wide stance of the of two of the legs, so I can see like what all parts are metal. Um, this will save us time in the long run because we're going to edge highlight, and if we edge highlight before this, we might spend half our time edge highlighting parts we don't need to. Uh, so don't waste your time in that sense. Just do the things that need to be done. Ordering saves so much time. Another little tip while you're painting these, identify an object, paint the whole thing, all right? Make sure you get all the way around it. Paint the next object that's like that when you have mirrored parts or multiple parts. If I went down one side of this leg and painted metal, I guarantee you I'll go down the other side and forget something. And then I'll, when I'm washing, I'll notice it. You might forget something anyway, but at least doing this, it's gonna keep you from having to go back and correct more. Also, don't worry about tiny little overages. Like, I got a little bit of silver here on the bottom of that. These things have black battle damage here and there. You can add black there, do a little edge highlight. Looks like battle damage. Nobody would ever be the wiser. Don't auto-correct when you are painting your silver. Silver is a prolific cover color. It's going to get on other objects. Don't worry about it. Correct later. So these gold objects need Reichland flesh shade now. Okay. To richen them up. So just to get an idea of what it looks like when you put it on. Gives you that nice rich red tone. And then we'll go back and do a little bit of dry brush with silver. Next step on our little crab legs here. Nun oil. We're going to go in, wash all these parts. Then we're going to go in with our sepia. After that, I know, lots of washes. We got the Reichland, we got the CPA, we got the, now we got the blue wash for the, yeah, but anyway, no oil on all of the silver parts, fairly heavy. All right, so we got all our parts washed. You may notice that it's not like a super careful wash. Again, we're going to be putting in a lot of black marks. We also have our sepia to do and then our edge highlights. And we got to do our edge highlights on the uh, the red here. Speaking of edge highlights, we can switch over and do the silver and red edge highlights on this. Again, we're going to be using our P3 colors, our Kador red base and Kador red highlight for our edge highlights. <clears throat> for these guys, we're going to do like a few little scratches and nicks here and there on the legs. I noticed that on the art there are some. So if we're following box art at a mid-level, we can add a few scratches finished result of the edge highlights and a little bit of battle damage not battle damage it's really environmental damage because these are the legs like a couple scratches here and there a couple pox here and there but overall very nice clean piece of armor that's been trudging through a battlefield um, still need to dry brush the silver on we can do that real quick on screen <clears throat> gonna grab the little tiny dry brush we already got some silver on our palette here Unload it and be careful around your red, right? You don't want to be this close to the end 
you get your silver on your red. But aiming for the high points and the edges, kind of using the dry brush like you would an edging brush, pushing it around the, the sides, and then really carefully across this. Again, hard to do on camera, but just for the point of illustrating. All right, black is dry. We've got our edge highlights here on our red pieces, and we did our um, silver dry brush, so you can see the edges are a little bit brighter. Match that Edmac feel. Uh, we're gonna take our sepia and hit just about every nook and cranny on this guy, um, especially these like little deep pockets here and um, around these little objects and around any sort of these 90 degree seams. We want to get some wash in there and the little rivet holes and things and we'll go back and edge highlight the whole thing. So while all that sepia wash is drying that you put on the legs and I went ahead and glued on the leg plates there, we're going to take our Bombay black ink and we're going to add some carbon scoring to the front end of these guns. So this is just a little light airbrush layer on the top and then we do another dry, dry brush of silver to bring the edges out again. Um, that's it, that's simple. Simple for the guns. So once your ink is dry on your guns, a little bit of dry brush, again, just to pull the edges out, corners. See how that gives you that delineation of where the, the gun starts and you hit those little flash ports there. And then this guy, this guy will take, and again, pull these edges back out. So you can still see the little carbon build up, but you still get your detail too. You just gotta know when to stop. Don't dry brush too heavy. So once you got all your black battle damage marks in here, we take a 50-50 mix of the Terran khaki and the white and we edge highlight. So we get underneath all these little chip marks to add some dimension to the damage so they don't just look like little black paint splotches all over the figure. For the bottom of the body section, masked off with sticky tack and we're going to use our Vallejo uh, metal color through the airbrush. To, to get a nice solid metal color. I'm probably going to put some more sticky tack here just so I don't uh, paint the magnet. There's no, no reason to do that. So we got our spray on with our quick mask. We have a little bit of overdress here and we're just going to knock those out with a little bit of black because it's the bottom of the panel. It's okay if we use that just to even it out, clean it up. So lenses for this guy is Crick's blue highlight and then a progressive mix of white with that. Highlight up, go almost to white and just paint like little half moons. Get small and small until it's almost a line and you can get a little bit of an edge highlight on the edge. It makes it look like a glow. You don't have to airbrush it on or anything like that. You just do it with a brush. Um, and then white dots as small or large as you're comfortable with. Um, <clears throat> there are lenses on all sorts of stuff. It's a pop of color that gives you an accent. Um, so anything that you feel like should be a lens, give it that blue. So for these big guns, I'm going to use parafilm to mask. I'm just going to slice off a piece here. And you peel the back off of it. You can use Silly Putty or whatever you got. I want to get closer to the line of where the guns start. So having this to just pull around and wrap helps. That way I won't knock out my red. And you can take and push and pull this stuff. And I can touch up where it goes on the, the gun. You see, it's a pretty quick, easy way to mask stuff. 
So I'll just edit this just a little bit, push it in where I want it to be, and then airbrush uh, the rest of the gun. Makes it a little bit quicker. So right now the only parts left are the hatch cover, the little missile bay. We've already airbrushed. We've done a little bit of the metal work. There's still some all this back here needs to be metal, wool antennas, things like that. And then uh, got to do the edge highlighting for these parts. Uh, edge highlighting for these guys. Washes. We're going to make the coils blue, so our accent blue. I've been using the um, Signar blue highlight. Couldn't read for a second. And then we'll do uh, a heat effect at the end of this barrel. Again, to differentiate, we'll do carbon here and then heat here for like the, that's like a big high powered laser thing. Um, and then this one will be the blue uh, sort of laser guy. This guy, these are kind of long steps where you gotta go in and you know, it's like it's painting a whole new person, well half a person. Um, and we're going in, we're gonna add our washes and all our little detailings, edge highlights, um, our brasses for him, uh, cause he's got a lot of brass on him. Um, we need the, the brass or gold, we're using a gold color as a brass. Uh, and then like little lenses for the the sight here. These are actually magnetized. There's little magnets down in here so that the hatch can open and close. You can take a guy in and out so you can have the gunner. You don't have to have the gunner. This moves, so these uh, open and close. Um, you're always going to get scratching with moving parts. Um, if that is something you don't want, uh, tack it in place with a little bit of glue and just paint over what you want to be the, uh, the tan. Um, but you'll see a little bit up here. So I might go in and hit the um, the hinges with a little bit more battle damage, some silver, some washes. But inevitably those are just going to scratch off too. Um, again, the the problem with moving parts, and this one's too small to actually magnetize, but we got our magnet in here. And this part's been stuffed with green stuff, so it's got a little bit of weight to it. Uh, but yeah, we'll finish up uh, with the heat gun or the big laser with the heat effect uh, here in a little bit. So for this guy, we're gonna add a little bit of glow using uh, just a blue India ink here. And we're gonna do that before we add our little plasma highlights just so <clears throat> we won't cover those up. If we did the little highlights first and then sprayed this, then it would be, yeah, wrong order. So after you do your airbrush, this is what you want it to look like before you start painting your plasma highlights. So we're going to use the blue wash on all of our coil areas. I've already added some to my palette. And that's just kind of even out the color before we start painting. Get some darks in there. Don't let it pull up too much. Just work it down in there. Make sure it's getting all those kind of light spots that are left and watch out for your bar so our heat glow yellow ink red ink indigo that's kind of my secret instead of doing a black do indigo at the end um, so we load that in the airbrush it's going to go on the end of this gun and we progressively add it to the tip so what your first layer should look like fading the yellow into a strong yellow tone toward the end of the gun I've added the red, not covering up the yellow, letting it blend to an orange between the two colors. Very strong red tone toward the tip. So now with your indigo on, you have your dark heat bloom on the end of the whatever laser this is. And then we'll add a little bit of black to this one for our carbon with a little bit of dry brush. I'm not going to dry brush this one, going for more of the heat effect and less of the carbon buildup. So here we have the finished dune crawler. Gonna do kind of a slow turnaround in case there's any details that you need to see for picking objects out. Also gonna disassemble the whole thing from its magnets. So we have our guns here. Come off. Strong magnets. Probably easier just to take that whole assembly off. And we have our rocket pod front mount. And the hatch comes off. Gunner comes out. Again, here's a slow turnaround. 
the pieces and parts and how they're painted. This guy. These two. And that's all the magnets except for the torso. This comes off. So there's a big magnet in there for this one. This part, got the little lens there. This gun. This guy. Headlights. Let's see green stuff in there. Show on the inside of there. Should be everything inside of that top. Cool.